What is up family? This is Danny from Plug and Play and today we have a really awesome tutorial for you guys about driving animation through audio frequencies. That means that you can pick out different sounds in a song and correlate any animation in After Effects to those sounds. I want to give a big shout out to a guy named Dan Eberts. This is the After Effects expression guru. I mean this guy is freaking insane. He shares a lot with the community and really helped us put this video together. Traditionally to do this you would need something like trap code sound keys but through some expression magic we got a really awesome workaround for you. We also set up a really intuitive template for you guys so if you're looking for that or the expressions that we used you can find them in the description below. Let's start off by making a new composition and we can call this sound animation or so. Let's make it 1280 by 720. You can make it larger but this is going to be a pretty um, hardware intensive um, effect. If you have a really nice machine you could probably bump that up to you know 1080p or 4k if you're really feeling it. Uh, we'll set the frame rate to be 30 and the duration we can set to maybe about 35 seconds. Now once you have done that, let's go ahead and drag in our audio clip. It's best to use something kind of simple with not a whole lot of different sounds as you can hear in this song that I have. There's pretty easy uh, beats to follow and I'm actually going to be using a certain section of this song. So it's going to start out kind of quiet and then we'll jump right into all of our different um, basses going on. Awesome. Let's go ahead and make a new shape layer and then let's look up an effect called audio spectrum. We can set that audio layer to be our um, song and we can go ahead and let's make the uh, start point down in this corner down here and let's make our endpoint um, be at the same Y position and drag him out a little bit more. We're going to want about um, 75 bands, bands to make a day. and we can increase the thickness of these guys probably to around 10. That looks pretty good. Let's get rid of the softness on here and we can select just side A. And then let's go ahead and let's go to a very loud part in our song. As you can see, this bass is going really high up. So we can go ahead and set our maximum height to be something where it maximizes the entire composition here. All right, awesome. Let's go ahead and let's set both of these colors to be white. And then we can go ahead and make a new rectangle. Now this rectangle doesn't need to be that big and its purpose is going to be to read the color channels on a particular layer that we select. Let's go ahead and center this anchor point. And let's drag this reader to be right over a wavelength of our choosing. So I'm going to scrub through our timeline here and I want to set this right as the bass kicks. Now as you can see, there's a bass kick right here but I don't want it to be set on this constant wavelength here. I want it to only happen on a wavelength that is happening at for like one frame. So as you can see, here's our bass kick and these wavelengths are going up with our bass kick. So I'm going to put our reader right above that wavelength. And as you can see, that wavelength is only up for a small amount of time, like one frame. Let's go ahead and let's drag this down. And we want to overcompensate here. So if there's any distortion in the song or for whatever reason a bass kick um, does not reach this level in the wavelength, we want to make sure that we are always capturing it. So if it is a little bit shorter in another bass kick down the road in the song, let's make sure that we are still able to detect if there is a alpha here or basically if there's a bass kick here. So now that we have that reader set up, let's go ahead and rename that to be reader. And we can go ahead and duplicate this reader. And let's set the second reader to be at a different frequency in the song. So as you can hear, there's that constant wub 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 sound. And let's go ahead and make sure that we are detecting that. So let's scrub through our timeline again. And it looks like this wavelength right here is a good indicator of when that sound is happening. So let's go ahead and drag our reader to be right above when that actual uh, wavelength is happening so that we can make sure that we are capturing when it's off and when it's on. 
So as you can see, the wavelength is going up for this sound, and then it's going back down. And that's going to be a good way to indicate when that sound is happening. So I've gone ahead and done a couple of different things. First thing I did was rename our audio spectrum layer to be spectrum. And then I went ahead and generated this new text layer, put some text inside of it, and I added two expression uh, sliders, two slider controls to this layer, and renamed them amplitude and size. So this is a slider control here, dragged it on over and renamed them to uh, be amplitude and size. Last thing I did was added this nifty little expression and we're going to jump into this and kind of go over what's going on here. Don't worry if you don't understand all of it. It's pretty technical, um, but if you have an idea or really want to get into expressions, this is kind of a way to do that. So as you can see, I have some different variables set up inside of here. Um, first one is amp and that's pointed to our amplitude slider here. Second one is size, that's pointed to our size slider here. Uh, source layer, this is going to be the layer that we're reading the color data from. So in this instance, I set it to be the spectrum layer here. Uh, sample size, that's going to be the radius that we're sampling our uh, colors from. And in this instance, I just set it to be one by one. Sample point, that's going to be the point of which the um, color is being sampled from and we have this linked up to be the reader so wherever this reader's anchor point is that's where the uh, the color data is going to be sampled from now this color uh, variable here this is what is actually going to be reading the color in our composition so as you can see I have it set up to be the source layer which is going to be the spectrum layer and then sample image is the expression that actually reads the color data. And so sample point, I have that set up to be the uh, reader layer. And then sample size, I have that set up to be the uh, sample size, which is one by one pixels. And then inside of this bottom expression here, I have it set up so size, which is our size slider here, is being added to the color data um, times the amplitude of that color data. So the reason that I have a three here is that it correlates to the alpha channel that this sample image expression is outputting. The sample image um, expression is going to be outputting RGBA and we put three here so that we can detect the alpha. And since that this is a, an array property because there's a uh, length and height to um, scale, we have to make sure that it's set up to be an array. Now, as you can see, when we scrub through our timeline here, whenever there is a base kick, this layer is going to increase in size. And we can fiddle around with the amplitude. So if we want this base kick to make a higher size in our layer, we can increase the amplitude. Or if we want it to be just larger overall, we can go ahead and increase the size here. So if we go ahead and do a quick RAM preview here, You can see that our text is being affected by this bass drum here, but the animation is pretty abrupt and it's only happening for one frame. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and let's add a new slider control to this layer. And let's call that input. Let's jump on into this expression and let's cut this whole expression out of here and do alt click on this stopwatch uh, slider here. And let's paste that expression into here. Since this is not an array, it's only one value, we can delete this bottom array and just call it X. Okay, let's jump into the scale property of this layer. I'll click on the stopwatch and let's set up some variables here. Let's set a new variable called I and let's set that equal to the output of this input slider here. We'll do semicolon and then we'll set up another expression called S and this is going to be using the smooth expression in After Effects. And I'll go over exactly what that means here in a second. We'll do I period smooth parentheses 0 0.05 comma five and parentheses semicolon and to wrap this up because this is an array, we have to do brackets. So we'll do bracket S comma S and bracket. And so what this expression does, basically it takes a um, a number of samples over a given period of time and it averages those values out to be um, something a little smoother. So we are taking five samples every 0 0.05 seconds and this expression averages those values and outputs something that is a little bit smoother than our current values. So as you can see when we do another RAM preview here, 
we have a little bit smoother of an animation going on. Alrighty, let's go ahead and make a new shape layer. And we are going to add an effect called CC Particle Systems 2 to that shape layer. We can set the longevity to be around 2.5. We can leave everything the same in the producer, but you know, feel free to experiment. Actually, please do experiment and see uh, what cool stuff you can come up with. And inside of physics, I'm going to set mine to be fractal explosive. We'll set the velocity to be about 4, gravity 0, resistance about 15. Inside of particle, I'm going to change particle type to be um, lens concave. But again, feel free to do whatever you want. I'll set the birth size to be about 0 0.05. The depth size to be about 0.1. Size variation 100%. Max opacity 100%. And that should be good for the inputs of this particle system. Now we're going to be using the bass drum to drive the birth rate of this particle generator. So let's go ahead and let's copy the expression from this base layer. And let's go ahead and go into this uh, birth rate inside of the particle system and all click on that stopwatch. We can go ahead and paste that expression into here. We can um, leave just the X at the bottom here. This is not an array, so it can just be X. And let's go ahead and jump back into this base text layer. And let's grab and copy the amplitude and size sliders here. We can go ahead and paste those onto here. And that's going to fix our expression. Now we'll set the size to be zero. So that means whenever there is not a bass drum happening, there's going to be no particles generated. And we can set the amplitude to be about 150 maybe. And let's see what we got here. So as you can see, whenever there is a bass drum kick, there's going to be um, a short interval of a bunch of particles being generated, right? It's only happening on one frame. We're not using that smooth expression in here because we only need this to happen very abruptly on one frame. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and let's bring some footage into this layer. I got this cool tap dancing video from like the 80s or something. We'll center that in the comp. Let's scale it up a little bit. And let's go ahead and let's go over to our particle generator layer here. We'll go into the effects. Let's copy the amplitude and size. And let's paste that onto the tap dancing video. Let's actually rename this particle layer to be particle. And now let's do command or control, depending if you're on Windows or Mac, and then option plus T. And let's go ahead and enable time remapping inside of this video. Okay, great. Now, next thing that we need to do, let's all click on our stopwatch for time remapping. And let's copy this expression from the particle generator. And let's paste that into this uh, new time remapping expression. We can turn down the amplitude. Let's make that about 10. And let's also all click on this size slider here. And we're going to enter a new expression. And let's enter time divided by 2. So what this means is that regardless of whether there's a bass drum or not, this video is going to be constantly playing at half the speed. And whenever there is a bass drum, there's going to be an increase in the time of this clip that's going to give us some cool jittering effects going on alongside the bass. So this is cool, but let's go ahead and let's take advantage of this other reader over here. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and let's jump inside of this expression. And instead of this um, sample point just being reader, let's make that reader 2. And now, let's see what this looks like. So as you can see, the time of this footage is being changed based on this um, reader layer here that is reading this higher audio spectrum of that wub 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 sound. So the animation and the time of this video is going to be correlated based on that audio. All right, let's go ahead and let's spice up this video a little bit. So I'm going to add a Venetian blinds to this video. And let's also take these amplitude and size sliders and duplicate them. 
let's bring them to the bottom and let's all click on this size stopwatch slider because we won't be needing the um, size to be driven by the time anymore. So we'll get that back to uh, regular zero and then let's go inside of our base text layer here and let's copy this input slider. Let's go back to the tap dancing video, paste that input slider in there and then we can start fiddling around with the expression of this Venetian blinds transition complete. So we can actually just hit double E on this um, base layer and we can copy the same expression from the scale that's going to help us smooth out this Venetian blinds um, animation here. So let's all click on the Venetian blinds transition complete and let's paste this um, expression into there. This is not an array so we can just set this to be S. And now let's hit double E on this uh, tap dancing video and let's go inside of this input expression here. So inside of here, we want to change a couple of things. We want to change amplitude to be amplitude two. We want to change size to be size two. And then we also want to add a times negative one to the middle of this X um, variable here. The reason that we did that is I want these Venetian blinds to be open whenever there is not a bass drum and close whenever there is a bass drum. So we can set this slider to be about 20 maybe, and let's set this direction of the Venetian blinds to be 90 degrees. I'm gonna set the width to be 10, and I'm going to set this um, amplitude layer to be 80. And so now, whenever there is a base, these um, Venetian blinds are going to be closing. Let's actually make sure that we have the right reader selected, which we do. We don't want this to be um, dictated by the um, second reader on this, uh, this higher frequency sound. We want this just to happen when the bass is going on. Cool, let's add a colorama to this just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. And let's set that below these Venetian blinds. We can go ahead and let's close up all these different layers here and let's drag this tap dancing layer to be below the reader here. And one more thing, let's go ahead and let's select our polygon tool. Let's draw a polygon. Let's go inside of the path of that polygon, change the points to three. Let's rotate this whole thing. Uh, let's actually center the anchor point first. Let's rotate the whole thing 180 degrees. And let's move that to the center of our composition. Scale it up a little bit. Maybe like right there is good. We can rename this to be Matt. And let's drag this right above our tap dancing video. Set the track mat of this to be Alpha Matt. And let's see where we're at. All right, now that you guys understand how to set something like this up, I'm going to introduce you to our template that we have. So you can download this in the description and when you open it up, it's going to look like this. We have a control layer with all these different effects on it. We have our song, our reader, and our spectrum set up just how we had it before. So let's go into this control layer and we'll go over some of these effects. So obviously we have amplitude and size, but now we have this accumulation checkbox. And what accumulation means is that instead of these values just fluctuating between a high point and a low point, as we move along the timeline, these values are going to be adding to each other and building upon each other. So let's set up an example here. Let's make a new text layer, center that in our composition, and I'm also going to be centering the anchor point here. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and let's copy all of these effects from our control layer, and let's paste them onto this rotation layer. Let's call up the rotation. I'll click on rotation, and then all we have to do is drag this to the output slider. Now let's go inside of amplitude. Let's set that to be about 30. Let's set the size to be zero to begin with, and then accumulation we'll have checked, and we'll set decay to be zero for now. As you can see, as we move along in our song here, This value is going to be increasing with every single um, beat kick that's happening. 
So instead of this going to 30 degrees on every single beat kick and then going right back to zero, it's going to be staying at 30 degrees until another beat happens, at which point it's going to increase another 30 degrees. So to compare the two, let's just uncheck this accumulation box right here. And then we're back to our original effect. Let's recheck accumulation here and let's add some decay. So decay means is that regardless if there's a beat happening or not, this value is going to be constantly decreasing over time. So I'll set this decay to be 10. So that's what the K looks like. Now let's drag in some footage and play around with that. I'm going to show you how we can get this footage to increase in time and basically cut to the beat of this song. So let's get rid of this rotation layer here. Let's go inside of control. Let's go into the effects, grab all of these effects, copy them, and let's paste them onto this new footage layer here. For amplitude, I'm going to set this to be about 0.5. Now this is going to be how many seconds we're skipping forward. So I don't want to skip forward too many seconds in our footage. I'm just going to skip forward half a second. For size, I'm going to leave that at zero for now. We're going to leave accumulation checked. Let's set decay to be zero. Now let's enable time remapping by doing command option T. And let's all click on the stopwatch. Grab the pick whip tool and drag it on over to output. Boom. Now, let's see what we got going on here. So as you can see, we're skipping forward in the video, but it's not actually playing. So to fix that, all we have to do is all click on the size slider here and type in time. And as you can see, we're skipping forward 0.5 seconds every single time a beat happens. So we can obviously increase this amplitude to be about something like 2. And at this point, we're going to be really skipping forward in this video. So under this decay slider here, we have a reader input, and this is where we can go ahead and select a different reader if we want to. Under that, we have input, beat count, and output, and this is where all of our expressions are living. So I'm going to jump into this expression, and I'm not going to be going line by line, but I'll show you guys the gist of what's going on inside of these effects. So inside of input, this is going to be where we're reading our color data from. B count is going to be counting the number of beats that have happened, and this is going to be driving the accumulation. Um, output is going to be taking all of these different effects and these expressions and kind of calculating them so that we get our desired effect. If we want to drive multiple audio animations in the same layer, all we have to do is take all of these effects, duplicate them, send them to the bottom, and then let's hit double E on this layer. And let's go down to the second effects here. Inside of input 2, we're going to change the number to 2 because this is the second input. And same goes for B count and output. We can add an effect like glow. And then let's all click on this glow intensity. And let's grab this second output here. Now we can go ahead and let's change the amplitude to be about 1. We'll all click on that so that we're back to a non-expression variable. And we'll set this to be zero. Let's get rid of accumulation. We'll leave decay at zero. And then let's go ahead and let's select this reader to be the second reader that I set up. And that's going to be on the wub 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 sound. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you guys enjoyed. Honestly, there's a lot of room for experimentation with this effect, so if you're feeling up for it, please try something new and send us anything that you make. If you like what we're doing, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button and follow us on our other social channels. This has been Danny with Plug and Play.